Father John is going to tell us the story of Saul today. Yay! Haha, <laughs> you're so excited, Matthew. Yes, he is going to tell us the story of Saul, the first king of Israel. Let's sit here and wait for Father. There he comes. <laughs> Hello, Jimmy. Good evening, everyone. So, children, which story did I tell you yesterday? You told us the story of Prophet Samuel. All right. And today, I'm going to tell you the story of Saul. Are you ready? Yes, Father. We are. Saul was anointed as the king at a very critical moment in the history of Israel. Philistines were very powerful and they were taking away the land that God had promised Israelites. The very existence of Israel was threatened. Israel, listen, it is God who speaks. I shall anoint a king for you. But remember this, he shall make the mighty men among you as his soldiers and servants, and your daughters will be his wives and maids. He will take over your land. He will reduce you to slavery. There will be no point in seeking help from God after this. What do you say? We don't worry about that, but today we want a king. Yes, what we need is a king. All right then, you shall have a king within 30 days from today. Gather all the Israelites at Mizpah on that day. In the hill country of Judea, there was a little town called Gaibe. In that town lived a man named Kish who belonged to the tribe of Benjamin. One day, some of his donkeys got lost. He sent his son, Saul, along with a servant in search of the donkeys. This happened a few days after Samuel promised the Israelites that he would give them a king. <sighs> I am tired. Let's search for some more time. Master, forget the donkeys. Let's return back home. They must be worried thinking about us. Won't it be a shame to return empty-handed? I've heard that there is a prophet around here. Let's go and talk to him. Yes, master. Come, maybe he can help us in finding the donkeys. Hey, look, there's someone there. Let's go and ask him. Hey, hello, sir. Yes, how can I help you? Sir, we heard that there is a prophet around here. Do you know him? Oh, did you mean the prophet Samuel? Yes. He is in town. You may find him on top of this mountain. Thank you, sir. Come, let's get to the top of this mountain. Have we reached, Master? <sighs> yes, we have reached the top. Oh, there's someone over there. Let's go and ask him. Excuse me, sir. Yes? Could you please help us find Prophet Samuel? We are coming from Gaibe. I am Samuel. Did you? 
Did you just say that you are coming from Gaibe? Yes, we are from Gaibe. And is your name Saul? Oh, yes, my name is Saul. But how did you know? God, it's like you told me in my vision. Thank you, God. Master, we come in search for our donkeys. They were lost a few days back. Don't worry about the donkeys anymore. They have been found. Come with me. You can stay with me tonight. Yes, master. Samuel had a vision about Saul the night before. And when he saw Saul, he knew that he was the chosen one by God to be the king of Israel. Saul stayed with Samuel that night and they were about to return back home the next morning. Saul, Saul wait there. Yes, master. Saul, I want to show you something. Tell your servant to go on without us. You go ahead. I'll join you in some time. What is it, master? Why did you want me to stay? Kneel down, Saul. Yes, master. Saul, God has anointed you to be the king of Israel. You will save God's people from their enemies. Master, I I don't think I'm worthy. I come from a humble family. It doesn't matter. You will know it's true because on your way you will find three men. Huh? One of them will be carrying three lambs. The second will be carrying three loaves of bread. And the third will be carrying a wineskin with him. And as you reach Mount Gaibe, the prophets will come out playing music and they will be chanting. The Spirit of the Lord will seize you at that moment. What? What am I supposed to do then? Don't worry. Do what you may at that moment. Like Samuel had foretold, Saul met with the men on his way. And when he reached Mount Gaibe, he saw the prophets coming down chanting and playing music. Ah, it's just like he told me. And now the prophets too. When Saul saw the prophets, the Spirit of the Lord came over him and he was transformed into a new man. Hallelujah! 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 Hey! Hey, isn't he the son of Kish? Yes, he is. But what happened to him? I think the Spirit of Lord has come over him. Is Paul one of the prophets too? Looks like he's one too. Hallelujah! The people of Israel gathered at Mount Mizbah as Samuel had directed them. They were waiting eagerly to meet their new king. People of Israel, you have elected Saul, son of Kish from the tribe of Benjamin, as your king. Saul, son of Kish, long live the king, long live the king. king. Saul, God has chosen you to protect Israelites from the enemy. You should always remember to be just and kind and be like a father to them. I will, Master. You should also care for the poor and you should not accumulate wealth. Do not build palaces for your own use. I will never forget your words, Master. I will never forget what you have done for me. Thank you so much. After Saul was anointed as the king, he returned home and started working in the field as usual. 
After about a month, two men came to meet him. My king, huh? Who are you? We are coming from the north, from a town called Jabesh Khalid. What do you want? Why have you come here? My king, the Ammonites have surrounded our town. We surrendered and begged for a treaty, and they agreed. If they have agreed to your treaty, then why have you come here? My lord, they are crazy people. Do you want to know the terms of the treaty? Hmm. They want to pluck out the right eye of all our residents. Huh? And we have got only seven days to give them an answer. If we don't agree, then they will attack the town and kill everyone. Is that so? Hmm. Please save us, my lord. We have got nowhere else to go. Don't worry. I will take care of this. You can return to your town now. God will look after you. Thanks, my lord. Saul assembled a huge army by threatening the people of Israel, and a huge crowd came to march with him. Listen, everyone. Jabesh Gilead is under siege, and the Ammonites are going to kill everyone in town. We must attack them and protect our people. Yay! Yay! Get ready to attack as soon as you hear the trumpet blowing. Yeah! yeah! Attack! attack! Under the leadership of Saul, the Israelites attacked the Ammonites, and they won the war in a very short time. Ha ha ha! We have won. Long live King Saul! Praise the Lord who gave us a king. We now have a king. Nobody will dare to attack us now. <laughs> Where is my son, Jonathan? Jonathan, where are you, Jonathan? I'm here, father. Put me down, please. Why did you call me, father? Jonathan, I need you to go to Gilgal for a sacrifice. I want you to move to Gaibe with a thousand men. The rest of the army will come with me to Gilgal. Gaibe, but you know that the Philistine fortress is on the way. What if they attack? Then you must take a different route. After my sacrifice at Gilgal, I'll come and join you. All right, father. I will do as you have told me. You take care, my son. Saul arrived in Gilgal and waited for Samuel to arrive to begin the sacrifice. Saul's son Jonathan had reached Gaibe. Master, we have been waiting for seven days. Can't we offer the sacrifice and continue with our journey? No, it must be Prophet Samuel who is offering the sacrifice. Lord, Lord, huh? Who is it? <sighs> Who are you? My lord, I was in Gaibe with your son. And... And... And what? What happened? And the Philistines attacked us. Huh? Is my son alright? Tell me. Is Jonathan alright? Yes, my lord. He's safe for now. We won at Gaibe. But... But... Tell me. What happened? All the Philistines have joined forces, and they're planning to attack again. Huh? They might attack any time now. We must stay here any longer, my lord. The Philistines will attack our children. Hmm. There is no time to waste, my lord. We must act quickly. Bring the offerings for the sacrifice. I will do the sacrifice myself. Get them quick. Yes, my lord. Saul's son Jonathan was stuck in Gaibe with Philistines waiting to attack his army. Saul wanted to raise there as quickly possible, so he decided to start offering the sacrifice himself. Huh? Is he offering the sacrifice? Samuel raised the temple while Saul was offering the sacrifice, and he got very, very angry. Stop it! Huh? Stop it, I said! What are you trying to do? I... I... 
Are you trying to snatch the priesthood also? What right do you have to offer the sacrifice? I'm sorry, master. I was waiting for you for so many days. And I just got the news that my son Jonathan is in trouble. The Philistines can attack Gaibe anytime. So, you thought you could offer the sacrifice yourself? You couldn't wait for me? I'm truly sorry, but if we delayed any longer, my son might get killed. Huh? You and your soldiers? Did you forget that it is God who leads Israel in war? Master, please do not misunderstand me. I offer the sacrifice to implore God's help. Don't you know that obedience is better than sacrifice? What obedience are you talking about? Is it my fault that you are late? What? No arrogance too? God is going to take away your kingship. King! King! What is it? Many of our soldiers are deserting us. What? But why? They think that you will not be able to leave them. Huh? You can do whatever you want. I am leaving. Why are you punishing me, master? You know what your mistake was. You did not wait. You are not obedient. Master, please. Don't touch me. God has chosen another one to be the king. Master, please forgive me. Please. Master, forgive me. Samuel was very depressed with what had happened at the temple. He couldn't stop thinking about it at all. What wrong did I do? I have loved and respected Samuel more than my father. Why is he being so cruel to me? How could I have waited any longer when my son's life was in danger? Am I thinking this way because I do not trust in God? Did I offend him by offering the sacrifice? Saul defeated the Philistines in Gaibe and saved Jonathan. But Saul became victim to a maniac depression. He could never get over to what had happened at the temple of Gilgal. Master, I have brought you the wine you asked. Hmm. What is this? It tastes like blood. Master, this is the best wine in all of Israel. How dare you call me your master? I am Saul and I'm looking for father's donkey. Donkey? I'm I'm sorry, master. Where are my donkeys? I have been looking them for so long. What is he talking about? I don't know, but something is seriously wrong. I think he is possessed by a ghost. Yes, he could be possessed. It is neither ghost nor devil. It's his own fear. Don't you remember? It started in Gilgal when he broke up with Prophet Samuel. Ah, yes. He has been like this for so long now. I hope he gets back to his senses soon. Huh? Who is this? Samuel, it's you. Stop strangling me. I'm going to kill you. Ah! <sighs> what just happened? It was just a dream. <sighs> Saul's trouble increased every day. The people around him brought a musician thinking that music will comfort him and they invited David a great musician to comfort Saul but this musician David went on to become the next king of Israel Wow did he really go crazy father Yes Lucy Saul's mind was troubled with what had happened and he could never recover from it Did his son die in the battle father no, he didn't. 
Saul's son Jonathan survived and he became a great friend of David. Father, was Saul really a bad person? Hmm. No, my dear. In fact, Saul more or less had a preparatory role. Like John the Baptist, John the Baptist had made way for Jesus, and in the same way, Saul prepared the way for David. Hmm. I think his breakup with Samuel changed him as a person. You are correct. When Samuel left him, his spirits were crushed and he fell victim to depression and jealousy. He could no longer distinguish between friends and foes and he ended up killing many innocent people. So, shall I start with my questions then? Who can tell me which tribe Saul belonged to? Me, me. <laughs> yes, Matthew. Saul belonged to the tribe of Benjamin. Correct, Matthew. Why did Israelites demand a king? Israelites wanted an army to defend themselves, and they demanded a king so that he can command the army. And who were the enemies of Israel? The Philistines, father. Good. Now, who appointed Saul as the king of Israel? It was Prophet Samuel. Correct. And what was Saul's profession before he became a king? He was a farmer. And what was his father's name? Hmm, his father's name was Kish. Good, Matthew. Now, who can tell me why Samuel got angry with Saul? Saul was waiting for Samuel at Gilgal to offer a sacrifice. But while waiting, he got the news that his son was about to be attacked by the Philistines. So in order to save his son, he had to reach there quickly and he decided to offer the sacrifice himself without waiting for Samuel. And when Samuel saw Saul offering the sacrifice, he got really angry. Samuel also told him that another person was chosen by God to be the king of Israel. This troubled Saul's mind for a long time and he fell into a depression. <laughs> Very good, both of you. So that's it, children. We'll meet again tomorrow then. Father, are you going to tell us the story of King David tomorrow? Hmm. Before I tell you the story of King David, I'll tell you the story of David, the shepherd. Is he the one who defeated the giant Goliath, Father? Yes, Lucy. David killed a giant named Goliath and defeated the Philistine army. Wow, it's going to be wonderful. We will meet tomorrow at the same time. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. Good evening, kids. Father, are you going to tell us the story of King David today? Hmm, I'm going to start with the story of David when he was young. I will tell you the story of King David tomorrow. Shall I begin? Yes, Father. In the town of Bethlehem, there lived a man called Jesse. He belonged to the tribe of Judah and was the grandson of Boaz and Ruth. David was the youngest son of Jesse and he was in charge of tending his father's flock. David was a gifted musician too. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Hmm. Hey, little one. You don't look okay. What happened here? What's over there? Hmm. Let me go and see what's there.
Huh? A lion? I'm not going to let him take my sheep. Hey, you! Look over here! Yes! Come here, you! Is it dead? Hmm. David! David! Where are you? Huh? Who's that? David, here you are. Elijah, my big brother! <laughs> David, it's been so long. How are you? I'm doing good. Tell me about you. What are you? What the? Did you? Did you kill this lion? <laughs> yes, I did. I killed it with a sling. Huh? You, you are so brave, David. God was on my side, big brother. Hmm. All right. Come with me. We need to reach home quickly. What happened, brother? Why are you in such a hurry? David, have you heard of Prophet Samuel? Of course, I have. Hmm. He has come to our home. And he is insisting on seeing you before dinner. Huh? Prophet Samuel wants to meet me? What could it be? I don't know, David. Let's hurry. It's getting late. You walk ahead, brother. I will get the sheeps and I will be right behind you. <coughs> Prophet Samuel had a vision and he arrived at Jesse's house as ordered by God. God had chosen David as the next king of Israel and Prophet Samuel arrived there to anoint him as the next king. The God of Israel anoints you as the leader of his people. After anointing David as the king of Israel, Samuel left the house of Jesse. In the meantime, at Saul's palace, the Spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, and he became a very troubled man. He couldn't sleep, and he had lost his mind. Master Samuel, please, please don't leave me. Uh, 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 uh. No! My Lord. Huh? Who? Who is there? Master, I have brought a musician with me. I thought music would give you some comfort. All right. What is your name? My name is David, my lord. I am a shepherd from Bethlehem. Hmm. Come sit here and play your music. Thanks, my lord. David was a gifted musician. His music soothed Saul's troubled soul, and he was able to sleep peacefully. But everything was not going well in the valley of Elam. The Philistine army was camped in the valley and they had brought Goliath with them, who was a giant and a fierce fighter. Move aside! Make way for the giant Goliath! <sighs> huh? What was that? I... I don't know. I will go and take a look. Oh my God! What is that thing? He's so huge! Israelites, you slaves of Saul, send forth your strongest man for a fight. If your man wins the fight, then you will win this war. If I win, then you shall serve us. What is he saying? He wants us to send our strongest man for a fight with him. But we don't have anybody as strong as that joint. Just look at him. He says that if our man wins the fight, then all the men in their camp will become our slaves. But if we lose, then we will have to serve him. Oh, how are we going to fight this giant? 
We don't have anyone who's as strong as him. Where is your stupid king? Elijab! Elijab! Huh? Hello, big brother. David, but what are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be looking after the sheep? I was looking after the sheep, but father wanted me to come here and meet you in person. What happened? Is he all right? Oh, yes. He... Israelite, where is your king? Is he afraid? Is he hiding somewhere? Who was that? How dare he insult our king? That is Goliath, the leader of the Philistines. He's been shouting like this for days now. But why isn't anybody coming forward to face him? What? Just look at him, David. None of our soldiers has the guts to face him. King has promised to marry his daughter to anyone who would kill this giant. Hmm. I will take that challenge. What? I said I can fight him. Are you crazy? Have you seen how huge he is? He will crush you in no time. Don't worry. I have God on my side. And as per David's request, he was brought before Saul. David, I admire your courage, but I thought you were just a musician. Do not be worried, my lord. I have killed many lions and bears to protect my sheep. Yes, my lord. David is quite skilled with his sling. He has really killed lions with his sling, my lord. Mm. All right, David. Bring my armor and shield. Let David wear them. Saul agreed to let David fight with Goliath, and he gave his armor and shield to David. What happened, David? My lord, I cannot walk with all these. These are too heavy. But David, how are you going to protect yourself? You need to wear those. Don't worry, I have God on my side. So David walked into the battlefield with just five stones in his bag and God on his side. <laughs> what are you doing here, kid? What have you got there? Stones? Are you going to chase some dogs? <laughs> Run for your life, kid, or else I will give you to the dogs. You can boast after winning. Let's fight. You have your spear and sword, and I have Lord on my side. Who? Huh? How dare you? I am going to crush you, you little dirt. You stupid Israelite. God, help me. Oh! Oh! <sighs> what just happened? Is that giant dead? I think Goliath, he's dead. My brother, he killed Goliath. David killed Goliath. <laughs> we won the war. <laughs> we won the war. David killed Goliath with just a sling and God on his side. He took the sword from Goliath and cut off his head. The Philistine army ran away when they saw that their leader was dead. David, from now on, you will be my personal God and head of my army. I am honored. Thank you very much. I will be always grateful to you, my king. And as I promised, you may also marry my daughter. Thanks, my lord. Hmm. You can stay in this palace with my son Jonathan till the marriage. Yes, my lord. Jonathan, take David with you and show him the palace. Yes, father. Come with me, David. David! David, 
I saw how you defeated the giant, Goliath. You were very brave. I had Lord on my side. You're so humble, David. From today, we will be brothers, inseparable. My life for your life. I will never forget this, Jonathan. My life for your life. From that day onwards, Jonathan and David became inseparable. They fought many wars together and won all of them. Jonathan rejoiced at David's victories. The people of Israel became increasingly fond of David, and this didn't go well for Saul. He was jealous when people rejoiced and honored David's victories. Huh. Now what more can he have but the kingdom? I must do something. Master, our army has won again. When they hear the name of David, Philistines are getting scared. Yes, father. David must be made the commander in chief. He deserves it more than anyone else. Jonathan, do you know what you are saying? What happened, father? There is no one in this whole world like David, and I love him more than my life. You and your love, you idiot. Don't you know that he will snatch your crown? So what, father? It's obvious that after you he should wear the crown and not me. Stop it. I will give him the crown he deserves. Seeing that his own son was praising David, Saul's jealousy grew further. He secretly hatched a plot to kill David. I am going to kill him today. Hmm. People will think that I lost my mind as usual. Huh? Master? <sighs> Father! What did you do? Huh? <sighs> Someone came at me with a sword and I threw my spear at him. That's all. It's okay, Jonathan. You know how the king sometimes loses his mind. Are you all right, David? I'm okay. Come, let's go. Ah! Saul's jealousy quickly turned into hatred. Saul made several other attempts to kill David, but all of them were futile. And one day, David, your life is in danger. My father is determined to kill you. Hmm. I know, but I don't understand. What have I done for my master to hate me so much? It's because he knows. Know what? My father knows that Prophet Samuel has anointed you, and you will be the next king. <laughs> me, a king? I'm running for my life here. You, David, you'll be the king of Israel some day, but you must escape tonight. Hmm. I will, my brother. Thank you so much, brother. My life for your life. My life for your life. David decided to escape that night, and before leaving, he went to bid farewell to Mitchell. No, dear, please don't leave me. Mitchell, do not lose heart. I will come back when your father changes his mind. He'll never change his mind. He has become so blind with jealousy. Let me also come with you. No, dear, that'll be too dangerous. You have to stay here. David waited until everyone was asleep and go out through the window. Lord God, protect him. Huh? King Saul has gone mad. How else can he levise such heavy taxes? It's like we are giving money for him to squander. I'm tired of paying these taxes. Being a king, that madman thinks that he can do anything. But what can we do? If we don't pay, then our lands will be taken. Did you hear what he did to the priest of Nob? What happened? Just because Nob gave a piece of bread to David when he was hungry, his whole family was slaughtered. Oh God, he has really gone mad. There is only one way out. What is it? Let's join David. He is a kind man, and I'm sure he'll help us. Hmm. You are right. 
David is the only person who can help us from Saul. But how are we going to find him? Saul's whole army is unable to find him. I've heard that he's hiding in the cave of Abdullam. Let's go and look there. Discontent with Saul's rule and plagued with debts, many people came to meet David. There were about 400 people who came to seek the help of David. He took these men and taught them how to fight. David, please help us. That wretched king, he took everything. My land, my cattle, he took everything. Don't cry, I will take care of you. Saul now became suspicious of everyone around him. Instead of waging war against the Philistines, he turned all his energy on chasing David. How long, David? How long are you going to fool me? My lord, David and his men are hiding among these rocks. They can get out only through this path. Hmm, we will catch him tonight. Hmm, it's getting dark. Let's stay here tonight. We can catch them in the morning. You can sleep inside this cave. We will keep a watch outside. When everyone was asleep, David entered the cave without anyone noticing him. When he saw that the king was asleep, he took the spear and the pitcher of water that were kept near Saul. He could have easily killed the king there. Instead, he just took these two things with him and left the cave. Did anyone see my spear and the pitcher of water? No, my lord. We didn't take it. My lord! Huh? Who is that? My lord! David? Why are you hunting for me? Look, here is your spear and pitcher. If I could take this from you while you were sleeping, then I could have done anything to you at that time. Can't you still believe that I'm not your enemy? He's right. What have I done? David, my son, you are far more righteous than me. I will not harm you anymore. Saul realized his mistake and went back. But as soon as he reached his palace, he got a terrible news. <sighs> my lord, what is it? Master, the Philistines are here. What? Yes, master. An immense army of Philistines have camped in Ephek. Are you sure? Yes, master. I have seen them with my own eyes. Their army is huge. Don't lose your heart seeing their numbers. God will hand them over to us. Huh? No, Jonathan. Why are you looking worried, father? I think... I think this is going to be our last war, my son. Your mind is troubled again, father. Don't lose your hope. It's not that. I'm sure about this. Last night, Prophet Samuel came and told me that God has abandoned Father? Yes, my son. I'm sorry for everything that I did. What Saul told him was true. Israel lost the war with the Philistines. Saul's three sons, including Jonathan, were killed. It's all over now. I... I'm not going to let the Philistines catch me alive. Master! Who are you? I'm coming from the Israelite camp. We lost the war with the Philistines. And... And... And what? Tell me now. And the king and all his sons were killed. Israel is scattered to pieces now. What? No! When David heard the news, he mourned and wept until evening for Saul, for Jonathan and others. Even though Saul had tried to kill David, David honored Saul as God's anointed one until the end. Father, did Jonathan also die in the battle? Yes, Lucy. Jonathan too died in the battle. So, 
Shall I ask you a few questions from the story? Yes, father. Hmm. Let's see if you can recall this. How was David and Ruth related? Me, father. Yes, George. Tell me. David was a grandson of Obed, who was a son of Ruth. Hmm. You have a good memory, George. Now, what was the name of David's tribe? It was Judah. David belonged to the tribe of Judah. That's correct, Matthew. And the next question: How did David come to the palace of Saul? David was brought to the palace of Saul to play music. Saul's soldiers thought that the music would soothe Saul's troubled mind. Very good, Lucy. Now tell me the reasons why Saul started hating David. David was winning all the battles and he was respected by everyone. And when Saul came to know that God had chosen David to be the next king, he started hating David even more. That's correct. Now that's all for today. I will tell you the story of King David tomorrow. Goodbye everyone. Goodbye, Goodbye father. father.